द रोल ऑफ मॉस्का इन वॉल्पन है दो द प्ले इज नेम्ड आफ्टर वॉल्पन है एनी रीडर विल एग्री विद द फैक्ट दट मॉस्का ऑफन स्टील्स द शो इन फैक्ट Mosca is one of Ben Jonson's most brilliant creations. We meet him at the beginning of the play and know that he is Volpone's accomplice. He executes Volpone's plan to cheat others with perfection. His attitude to Volpone right from the beginning of the play suggests that he has to earn his bread by keeping volpone in good humor and help him to satisfy his greed of money and even his lust the very name mosca which means a fly or a mosquito is significant keeping with the beast fable this name points to the role of parasite that mosca apparently performs in this play as a mosquito thrives on the blood of another animal mosca thrives on volpone's favors but is that all our close engagement with the text might reveal that it is not possible to relegate mosca to the secondary role altogether he is not merely a psychophant or a parasite at times he exhibits more intelligence more smartness and more subtlety than his master also at one point he is more avaricious than volpone hence mosca is not just a subordinate to volpone but his parallel in this context i would like to draw your attention to act 3 scene 1 where mosca defines his position as a parasite we have always observed how as the chief executive officer of volpone's plans mosca presents himself as smart witty resourceful and having invariable presence of mind by exhibiting all these qualities mosca also in a way a threat to volpone as volpone is an other in the society and as a marginalized character he is trying to dislodge the so called powerful figures of the society like corvino and corbecci by befooling them similarly it would be an interesting study of the main characters of the play to see that volpone himself runs the risk of being dislodged from his powerful position by mosca though it may seem ungrateful on the part of the mosca to have schemed against volpone to have planned to rob volpone of his wealth it is in a way a desperate attempt on the part of mosca to consolidate some sort of agency for himself it is through this act that mosca who has been doubly marginalized in the play uh it is an attempt on the part of mosca to come back to the center and retrieve the central position in the play this of course adds 
a wonderful dimension to the play. But interestingly enough, this also makes Mosca an overreacher in the play and integrates his position with the comic structure of the play. The comic structure of the play basically depends on the formula that if you transcend your limit, you will fall. Mosca paves the path of his own ruin only when he plans to rob Volpone, only when he plans to dislodge Volpone from the center and assume the central position himself. This ambiguity in the character of Mosca, where at the one hand there is a very interesting disparate desire on the part of Mosca to reach the center from the margin and on the other hand Mosca, Mosca's conformity to the general structure of the play where if you are, if you are an overreacher you will fall. These two things, intertwining of these two particular strands in the play makes Mosca a very interesting study indeed. Of course at the same time Mosca is in no way different from the other characters of the play like Volpone, Corbaccio, Voltore, Corvino. Mosca also is seized with avarice at one point of time. So it is an interesting study. The character of Mosca is a very interesting study from whichever angle you try to look at it. If you are a very serious reader whose mental setup is defined only by the moral vision then you find Mosca an abominable character who conforms to the fable of this overreaching. But if you try to read the play only as a comedy, then you find that Mosca sometimes transcends his own limitations and uh, reveals himself in and reveals himself as a sparkling, dazzling character, which you might detest at times, but it is quite impossible not to fall in love with him, at least at times.